Hi, I'm Will. This is Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And welcome once again to Warhammer 40,000 Conquests. In this episode, we will be looking at this magazine briefly and then playing the game, if you want to skip straight ahead. With the issue, we've got a pot of Necron Compound, which is a dry paint, and we'll be showing off how to use that soon. But first, we've got some information about the Adeptus Mechanicus, which is the uh, Imperium's technological faction. Well, actually, technically, they're a separate faction that's aligned to the Imperium, I think. So they're kind of their own thing, but sworn by ancient service to the Emperor. And then, uh, actually, an Adeptus Mechanicus showcase, I don't think we've had something like this before, actually shows off some of the miniatures as Belisarius Call, who invented the Primaris Space Marines. Well, made them anyway. And that's Imperial Knights, uh, Skitari, Legio Cybernetica, there's robots and things. Then we've got Chronicles of Ultramar, more of these, more History of the Ultramarines chapter and their fights. Noble Plague Drones, these are a kind of demon, it's basically a plague bearer, mounted on a giant fly. Very pleasant, and then a bit of fiction involving them, there's the models there. And we have the Imperial Fist chapter in their bright yellow armour, and it explains that they are experts at siege warfare and bolter marksmanship. Then, here we have a picture of the dry paint Necron compound, and it shows that we've already been shown how to dry brush earlier, but dry paint are designed for dry brushing. They have a lot less medium in them, basically, so they're much drier as a paint, so you need to wipe less off on your brush to get them to a dry brushing state. In a lot of cases, it doesn't matter because you just use the paint you want to dry brush with, but I find dry paint's quite useful for really big models because you waste less paint by scraping it off onto a tissue if you're using a dry paint. So if you're doing a huge like a piece of terrain or something, then I actually prefer to use a dry paint for that, or, or a vehicle or something. Then it shows you how to dry brush the plasma regulators that we got last issue, so bits of terrain from the city board as well. More, just some more details as well, adding more colours to scenery that haven't been mentioned before. It even tells you to shade the ammo crates that we got way back on the cargo deck and haven't seen since. So now we're on to our mission for this issue, featuring armour containers, so we'll get onto that right away. So now before we head into our mission for this issue, we need to go over some old rules for the armoured containers, if you may remember them from the cargo deck. So as it says here, using your containers, you just put them wherever you want really. So a slight update to the rules, you no longer get a cover bonus if you're obscured by them. So in the past, if a unit was obscured partially by the container, they got a cover bonus, that is no longer the case. Uh, but they do block line of sight still though. And they've got the storm bolt rules, are exactly the same as they were before. And over here, just going over the new rules, basically if you're on top of the container you don't get cover, if you're not, if, as long as someone can see you behind one, you don't get cover. And just going over who can shoot the storm bolters, you just have to be next to one. And you shoot it instead of the other, whatever the weapons the model has. And on to our mission. So there's a number of tech dumps, and the space marines and the death guard are fighting over it. And as we see here, there's an arms race going on, as both sides are rushing to capture containers of supplies and equipment. So the battlefield is uh, very similar, it's the same two board arrangement, but we see we've got the three containers placed on it. Container there, and over there, and down here. So for deployment, both players roll off, the winner decides who deploys first, and you'll see the Death Guard deploy on the city side, and the Space Marines on the Mechanicus side. Players then alternate deploying their units, beginning with the player who chose to deploy first, and after all units have been deployed, the player who finished setting up their army first can choose to take the second, the first or second turn. And of victory conditions, you get one point for killing the enemy warlord, another victory point for the first player to eliminate an enemy unit, so first blood, and then each objective held at the end of the game is worth one victory point, so that's the three containers. As always, to hold an objective, you must have more moles than the enemy within three inches of it at the end of the game, and the game lasts for five battle rounds. So that's it, so we'll get into the army overviews and then roll off for deployment. So here's our Space Marine army for this mission. In the front we have the Librarian, then there's five intercessors, two Inceptors, three Hellblasters, and five Reavers. Obviously the Librarian is the Warlord, and once again I'm going to pick the Storm of Fire trait. Since we need to decide our Psychic Powers before deployment, my Librarian Psychic Powers will be Might of Heroes and Psychic Fortress. So here's our Death Guard army for this mission. Here we have the Malignant Plague Caster, the Noxious Blightbringer, five Plague Rings, the Tainted Cohort, and twelve Poxwalkers. So who's going to be your Warlord? My Warlord is going to be the Noxious Blightbringer, and he's going to have the Warlord trait uh, Arch Contaminator, which is the one that makes Plague Weapons better. Indeed. And for his Psychic Powers, the Malignant Plague Caster is going to have Miasma of Pestilence and Blades of Putrefaction. So we're going to roll off to see who decides who deploys first. I got six. No, I didn't. I will deploy first, because I'll finish setting up my army first so I get to choose who goes first. 
Well, for my first deployment, I'm going to put the Inceptors in reserve, and for William's first deployment, he's going to put the Tainted Cohort in reserve, so straight on to my second deployment. So there for my second deployment, the Intercessors are going to go just near this container. Well, my first deployment choice is the Poxwalkers, they're going to go right in the middle of the road. And the Hellblasters are just going to go on over here on the opposite side of the road to the Intercessors. My third pick is my Warlord, the Noxious Blightbring, he's going to go behind the Poxwalkers, uh, make them get a run on. And for my fourth pick, the Reavers are going to go in between the Hellblasters and the Intercessors. My fourth choice is the Plague Mage. they're over there in the corner so the Hellblasters can't see them. And for my final pick, the Librarian is just going to go down there behind the Intercessors. For my final pick, my Psyker is going to go down here in the middle behind the Voxwalkers as well. So now we finish deploying, I get to pick who goes first and well, I guess I'll go first so we'll head into Space Marines turn one. So my movement phase, first off the Intercessors are just going to move up their six inches, then uh, the Reavers are going to advance, get that in the box, Ooh, I get to go 12 inches. The Librarian is also going to advance, he rolled a three so he can go nine inches. So the Librarian has finished his move and the Hellblasters are just going to move up behind, uh, only this one can actually see anything to shoot at, which is the Poxwalkers. So movement over is on to the Psychic phase. The Librarian will attempt to manifest Psychic Fortress on the Reavers. So Psychic Fortress has a warp charge value of 5. He gets it off with a 6. And so the Malignant Plague Cast was not in range to deny and I'm not going to use any more Psychic Powers. So on to the shooting phase. The Intercessors can see those Poxwalkers so they'll shoot at them. 5 shots hitting on 3s. Three. 3 hits. Wounding on 3s. Three. 3 wounds. Disgusting the Resilient. Made one, so two go down. Yeah, that's enough to get rid of the bonus. Mm. And the one Hell Blaster that can see will also shoot at the Pox Walkers, just for the sake of it. He's not going to overcharge. One shot hit you on a three, he hit. Wound you on a two. Yeah. He wounded. And he killed one. Yay. Go, Hell Blaster. And that's going to be it for my turn, because we're way too far away for charges. So it's on to Death Guard turn one. Well, all of my guys who are on the board are going to advance. We'll start with the Plague Marines. They roll a six. Ooh. So that takes them to there. We'll do the Poxwalkers next. They're within range of the Noxious Blightbringer. So two dice picking the highest. Five. That gets them to there. And the two characters will advance as well. Uh, the Noxious Blightbringer himself rolls a six in total. Uh, and the and the Plague Caster rolls a five. And that's enough to bring them up to there. And a slight adjustment for the Plague Caster. Make sure you can see the Reavers so you can smite them. I'm not going to bring the Tainted Cohort in yet, so we'll be on to the Psychic phase. Playcaster will start with uh, Smite, so it will hit those Reavers. Yep. It goes off on a 5. That's cocked. No, no, it's not. That's a 3. That's 3, so that doesn't go off. My we'll try and cast Miasma of Pestilence on the Plague Marines. Yep. That goes off on a... S not a 5. So mm -hmm. I didn't get that off either. So he's oh not having a good day. The only shooting I have is the Plague Marines. They advance, but the Blight Launchers are in range of the Hellblasters, so we'll shoot at them. Yep. Hitting on threes, re no, fours, re-rolling ones. Uh, it didn't make any difference. Three hits. Winning on threes, uh, re-rolling ones. No, any one. Well, five plus armor save. Nope. D3 damage. One. That's a Hellblaster takes a wound. There we are. All right. But uh, that'll be it for my turn, because I can't charge, so. Uh, yep, yeah. too far away to charge. So, yep, on to Space Marines, turn two. Just remembered the Noxious Blight Ringer's Warlord trait and check the footage. Uh, that two that the Blight Launch. Warlord launcher rolled can be re rolled because the uh, Warlord trait allows you to roll all filled wounds. That's still a two. There we go. So nothing happened. So I've just completed my movement. The Intercessors have moved up to be in front of this box and the front three are within rapid fire range of the Poxwalkers. The Reavers have come around this way the, bo the box to be near the Plague Marines. The Librarian has moved up behind the box and uh, he can only see the Plague Marines for smiting purposes. And the Hellblasters have moved up behind him. And at the end of my movement phase, the two Inceptors will come down just here in this area terrain. So movement over onto the Psychic phase. We'll attempt to manifest Smite. Okay. It will hit the Plague Marines if I am successful. He needs a five. Gets it with an eight. You'll try and deny. I shall try and deny this. I need a nine. Oh, I got oh, 12. 12. Fortunately, you don't get Ooh. perils on denies, so it doesn't yeah. go off. And then the Librarian will try to manifest Psychic Fortress on the Reavers again. Okay. So he needs a 5, gets it with a 6. So on the shooting, onto the shooting phase, we'll start with the Intercessors. They're going to shoot at the Poxwalkers. So we'll have 8 shots, because only 3 of them are in rapid fire range. 8 shots hitting on 3s. 5 hits. Wounding on 3s. 4 wounds. 
Uh, oh. Disgusting resilient. We'll make three, gosh. Okay. And we'll lose. Oh, this one's lose. Uh, next, I'll do the Inceptors. They will shoot at the Plague Marines. 12 shots hitting on threes. Seven hits, wounding on fours. That'll be four wounds for four plus armor saves. So one. Disgusting resilient. Yes. I'll do the Hell Blasters next. They'll shoot at the Plague Marines. They aren't in rapid fire range, so got three shots, not overcharging. Hitting on threes. They all hit, should have overcharged. Wounding on threes. Two wounds. No armor save, because I'm not in cover. And. Oh. Not any. And then we'll do the Reavers. They're going to fire their pistols at the Plague Marines. We've got five shots hitting on threes. They all hit. Wounding on fives. Three wounds. Can we kill a Plague Marine? AP minus one. Two failed saves. Disgusting resilient. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, we killed a Plague Marine! Yeah. Huzzah! And then the Librarian, I think, is out of range. So that'll be the end of the shooting phase. On to the charge phase. Uh, the Reavers will declare a charge on the Plague Marines and the Poxwalkers. So we'll overwatch with Blight Launchers on sixes. Nothing. Uh, the one remaining bolt gun on sixes. One hit. Wounds on four. Nope. And the plasma gun not supercharging misses. Our charge distance is three, so that's not going to be enough. And that'll be it for my turn. On to Death Guard turn two. So everybody's moving up normally. The plague marines have moved there. They're into the area of cover now. Yeah, and they're still within two inches of the ammo boxes. Yep, yeah, box walkers are here and still in the middle of the road. Uh, the carriage is behind them. And then at the end of my movement phase, the tainted cohort have been pushed all the way over here for their deployment. Uh, nine inches away from the intercessors and also from those reavers. On to the psychic phase. Yep. We're going to start with my asthma of pestilence. It's going to go on the plague marines. Okay. Um, we need a six. Still, yeah, still no good. Oh, blimey, that's, that's <laughs> very poor. Three in a row, not getting more than a five. Yep. Then we're going to try and smite, which hit the reavers. No. Nope. Oh. That makes up for my disgusting resilience. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, that is appalling. That's worse <laughs> than the librarian has ever been. Well, um, let's pretend that didn't happen in the shooting uh, phase. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll crack grenade you first with the... Uh, Malignant play plague caster. Thank you. Here's crack grenade the reavers, just in bounding range. Yep. On a three, re-rolling not twos. I really want to supercharge this plasma pistol, but I'm not going to Go because on. he's my warlord. And Go on. Even though it's a 1 in 36 chance, no. Then we'll do the plague marines next. We can shoot everything at the inceptors, except this guy here with the bolt gun. He's going to chuck a crack grenade at the reavers. Okay. Range for that. So we'll do that first. It's on a three. No, no. Oh, blimey. Uh, blight launchers at the inter interceptors, re-rolling ones. Three hits. Re-rolling in the threes, re-rolling everything, thanks to my warlord trait. Three wounds. So that's three, four plus armor saves, because we are in cover in the area of terrain. Yep. I only made one. So d3 damage, uh, three, and three. Wow. Okay. So the interceptors go down, and you get a victory point for first blood. Yes. And uh, the champion's plasma gun doesn't get to shoot, but never mind. And I'm still left with this dilemma of whether to overcharge his plasma pistol. I'm not going to. We're going to shoot the Reavers. Yeah. Not supercharged, because... Ah, oh, I should shoot the charge. Yeah. Wound on a three. It does. Six plus armor save. No. No, that's the fine. So Reaver takes a wound. Put it on the man at the front, I guess. And then we've got the tainted cohort. Uh, they're going to shoot everything at the hell blasters because there's a guy on a wound. Okay. Eight shots on threes. That's some ones. If I hit wounding on fours. Three. Three plus on the saves. Ugh. Failed one. Wounded man goes down. Blech. So I'll be on to my charge phase then. Yep. The poxwalkers could actually die. So we will... Mind you, I don't care if you shot grenade them. So the poxwalkers will charge the reavers. Okay, so yeah, we will overwatch with a shot grenade and then bolt pistols. Yeah. So the shot grenade has D3 shots. Two. Hitting on sixes. Oh, I got a hit. Ah, okay. So that's a minus one to hit for the box walkers. Yeah. And then four bolt rifle shots. Bolt pistol shots, sorry. There's one hit. Wounded on a three. Wounded. Oh, he lives at least. There we go. Uh, their charge of ten is easy enough. So that's their charge like that. I think we'll do the tainted cohort next. They're going to charge the intercessors. We'll watch with our bolt rifles. So we've got ten shots. Hitting on sixes. Not a one. And then they need a nine. They've got a nine. Oh, they're in. So that gets them to there. Yep. We will do the plague marines into the reavers now. Mm hmm. Going a four, but that'll be enough. Well, there's no room for my characters to come in now, so they won't bother. We'll do the poxwalkers first. At first, even though they're hitting on sixes, we could get a poxwalker back, so he's going to go up on the wall. Mm hmm. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight poxwalkers. 
16 attacks, hitting on sixes. Yep, shot grenade. Yeah, we've got two hits. Moving on fives, come on, lads. No, nothing. Then we'll do the Blade Marines. They need to pile in a bit to get the champion in range. Yep. We'll do the three knives first because it's a guy on one wound. Yep. Hitting on threes. Uh, two hits, but Death of Falls Emperor gets a third. Moving on fours. We're rolling failures. We're rolling failures because I'm a warlord trait, thank you. Stopes. <laughs> Still only one. So three plus armor save. Made it. Right, so we'll have to waste the power on the wounded man. Uh, missed. We missed. So there's just the tainted cohort left to go. Come in like that. We'll do the man with the sword. No. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll do the, we'll do the man with the sword first, because that's what I said. On threes. Two hits. On fours. One wound. Six plus armor save. Made it. Yeah. The axe on threes. And threes. One wound. Five plus armor save. Yep. Man takes a wound. That will be the regular guy at the back. And then man with fists gets two hits, wounding on fours. Oh, that's a six, that's AP minus one. Oh. So two wounds, one of them maybe. So a three plus armor save, which I failed, and a four plus armor save, which I made. So wounded man gets punched to death. And then they will consolidate like that, bringing the Hellblasters into melee yeah, as well. So Hellblasters get to fight, you know how deadly they are usually. Yeah, I know. Uh, so we'll start with the intercessors, because I'm pointing at them with the camera. So we've got nine attacks with the sergeant, hitting on threes. We've got six hits. We're going to do on fives. Nothing, nothing higher than a three. Mm. Then we'll do the Hell Blasters. They have five attacks, hitting on threes. Three hits. We're going to do on fives. God, nothing higher than a three again. And then the Reavers. Yeah, mm. so the Sergeant will pile in a bit, but we are all within an inch of an inch of people who are in fighting the Poxwalkers, so I've got all our attacks on the Poxwalkers. So we have 16 attacks, hitting on threes. That's a lot of ones and twos. So we only got six hits out of that, wounding on threes, four wounds. Oh, you killed four well, at least. At least we killed four pox augers. And that will be it. So we'll head into De uh, Space Marines turn three. So movement on my turn is going to be pretty simple. The Reavers are going to stay where they are in combat. The Hellblasters are just going to shuffle over a bit. They are falling back out of melee though, as are the Intercessors. So we can shoot at the Terminators and the Librarian's going to move up a little bit so he's closer to the Terminators and so that everyone is within the six inches for Storm of Fire. And with that, it's on to the Psychic phase. The Librarian will try to manifest Smite. He needs a five, gets a seven. I'll try and, try and deny it. Nope, double one. Oh, this is <laughs> the other end of Perils, but not fortunately not Perils again. So D3 Mortal Wounds, two. Ignoring them on one, so one damage. Right, so Terminator takes a wound. Uh, it'll be him. We'll try to do Might of Heroes on himself. He needs a six. Does not get it with a five. So that, that dunks on to the shooting phase. Uh, we'll do the Intercessors first. They'll shoot at the Terminators. Yeah, okay. So one will throw a crack grenade and one the others will fire their bolt rifles. And we'll start with the bolt rifles. Six shots hitting on fours because we fell back. Two hits wounding on fives. Oh, oh so that's AP minus two, so that's a four plus armor save. Nope. And disgustingly resilient. Yes. No, of course he did. And then the crack grenade hitting on a four, it hit. Wounded on a three, it did. Three plus, yes. Uh, then the hell blasters will also shoot at the terminators. Maybe we'll we maybe we'll kill one. Four shots hitting on four, but not overcharging. Good thing, or we would have blown up. One hit, wounded on a three, and it didn't. And then the light brown will throw a crack grenade at the terminators. One shot hitting on a three. It did hit, wounded on a three, it wounded. Minus one. Oh, that's a one. D3 damage, three. And it takes him out. Yeah, oh, yeah, now yeah. I failed them. Yeah. Well, it only matters for one gun, one wound. And then the Reavers will fire their pistols. And they'll fire their pistols at the Plague Marines, just for the sake of it. Five shots, hitting on threes. Wounded on fives. It's all threes. <laughs> so I'm not going to declare any charges, because the Librarian did not get Might of Heroes. So straight on to the fight phase down here. And the Reavers will attack. Oh, we'll attack the Plague Marines because the Poxwalkers is only four left and hopefully we'll have a better turn. So we have 16 attacks on the Plague Marines, hitting on three. It's better. It's, it's better, but I mean, yeah. that's eight hits. I mean, come on. Usually on fives. Well, that's well there we go, there's four wounds. Uh, three plus armor, failed two of them. Cool. So disgusting you resilient. Oh, now I don't make them. Oh. So obviously the bolt gun. No, I'll take this one because I won't be in melee. Anymore. And the oh, Reavers will consolidate a bit. Okay. Uh, and that'll be it for my turn. So you've got your hit back. Yeah, well, we'll do these Poxwalkers first. We're going to try and take down that. Back to hitting on fives at least. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh. Four hits. Uh, wounding on fives as well. One. 
three plus. Made it. Phew. Yeah. And then the two plague marines. Yeah, we'll do the plague knife because there's still that guy's still on a wound. He got a hit. It wounds on. A, it does wound on that. Three plus. No, there wounded goes. man goes down. Can the power fist hit? No. <laughs> and that's the end of the turn. And uh, these guys have to make a morale test because they have minus one leadership for being near the reavers and they took two casualties. They did, actually, so yeah. So, yes. If on you a roll, six, on, one of them might run on away. On a six, one of them will run away. Yes. <laughs> Another failed morale test. Yeah, I know. This is clearly this new board. Everyone's yeah. confused. There we are. So the blight launcher runs away. So it's on to death guard turn three. So for my movement, all of this is going to stay in melee because... Yeah, the, um, the Pog Talkers are still just within an inch of that reaver, so they are still engaged. Yeah, they're also cont- helping me contest this object. Well, you have more bodies at the moment, yeah. but they are bodies. And the lone champion is better in melee than you. Well, he can't. if he falls back, then... He can't shoot, so... Yeah, so he'll stay there. The playcaster has moved over here. He can still just about see a reaver yeah. in the corner, so Let he'll, be, he'll be the smite range guy. He can't mm-hmm. see any Hellblasters. Tainted Cole, they're basically in the same place as they were before. And finally, uh, my wall is going to advance, because I think his use has expired. Oh, six. And uh, that brings him to over here, um, to get within the, his wall or range of those terminators who have some of the only plague weapons left on the board, mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, so now we're on to the psychic phase. Yep. We'll start with smite. It'll hit the reaver, and you can just about see. On a five. Yeah. You've got a psychic power. Yeah, and actually that will do a mortal wound to you someone will. if it resolves. So if you fail to... I will attempt to deny it, so I need to roll a... Uh, an eight, because an you've eight. got a psychic. because yes, I get plus one. Nope. So it resolves. So it does three. You are. Okay. So it does four mortal wounds. So I'm going to play a bit of musical wounds, almost. I'm going to take this reaver away. So he takes two mortal wounds. Then another reaver will take another mortal wound. And now... The Hellblaster squad is actually the closest enemy unit to the middle. Yeah, they're blaster. within five inches. So, so then... the Hellblaster will take a wound, and hopefully this won't backfire. And then for his second psychic power, he's going to cast Blade of Putrefaction on the Terminators. Okay. So we'll this try. goes this goes off on a five as well. Oh, a six. And so you, you can't deny it. it, but no mortal wound to yeah. the Hellblasters. And now the Poxor is also unengaged. The only one that's going to matter is these Terminators. They'll shoot the Hellblasters, try and take that wound off. Yep. On threes. And I'll try and get them all in the box. Well, that's not bad. Should... Seven hits. And fours. Oh, they actually rolled decently. Five fours. wounds, was that? Yep. Five three plus armor saves. Mm. Failed two. Wounded man goes down. Sarge is down to a wound. The malignant playcaster does actually have a bolt pistol, so he'll shoot it at the, uh, at the intercessors. Yep. It hit. It wounds on a four. No. And we'll be on to the charge phase now. Mm hmm. The Poxwalkers have become unengaged, so they will charge into the um, Reavers. Yep. Um, and we'll declare the Hellblaster Sergeant as well, just because he can't see them. We're going to engage him. In seven? Probably. So they've done their charge like that, bringing both units into melee. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Malignant Plate Caster will declare a charge on the Hellblaster Sergeant. Yep. He'll declare the Reavers as well, actually, because it will only be a... Um, well, I don't know. If I roll a five, it might matter. Right. I roll a twelve, well, so there you that'll, go. that'll do. He'll tuck in there. And then finally, the tainted cohort will charge the intercessors. Okay, we'll overwatch. Uh, one will overwatch with a crank grenade, and the other six with their bolt rifles. So, crank grenade first, hit on a six, it hit. You only on a three, it did. Oh dear. That's on the D3 same. D3 damage. Two. Oh, phew. Oh, there you go. See what we were worried about. <laughs> and then bolt rifles hitting on sixes, there's two hits. You only on fives, uh, there's one four plus armor save. Which I failed, and disgusting resilient. I have also failed. So Terminator takes a wound. The swordman, and then they're charged. They're, they're just they're going to be in, yeah, not roll it. This guy advanced, so we'll be on to the fight phase. Well, well actually, we'll be on to my heroic intervention. Yeah. So he'll come in like that okay. and fight the Poxwalkers. We'll do the Poxwalkers first, because I could get models back. So three on the Reavers, and one on that Hellblaster Sergeant. Okay. That's the best I can manage. So on the Reavers, six attacks on fives, nothing. And on the Hellblaster Sergeant, one hit on a five. Nope. We'll do the malignant plague, cl- malignant plague caster first. Next. Yep. Three attacks on threes. Two hits. Winning on threes. It's strength six with this thing. Oh, double six. But that doesn't do any damage. AP minus one. So four plus. Armor saves. Third one. So Sarge goes down. We won't consolidate, I don't think. Okay. I'm hitting him. Do Terminator's X. The last charging unit. We've got the axe hitting on threes. Uh... Death of the False, Death of the False Emperor. Emperor gets a second hit. Uh, wounding on threes, re-rolling everything. No, wounding on twos, re-rolling everything because yep. of Blades of Putrefaction. 
and that's uh, so that's two wounds, one of which has a mortal wound in addition, thanks to blades, okay. and, that, and the six is also my AP minus three. So we got a five plus armor save, which I failed, and a six plus armor save. No, it was only oh no, sorry, which I failed, and also a mortal wound. Now the sword. He rolled a double one to hit, so he didn't know it's consolidating. Now you get to pick, get the first pick of non-chargers, which is the Plague Champion. Yeah. So two attacks on fours. Oh, he's got a hit. Wounding on the two. Yep. Six plus. No. Nope. So it kills the wounded. wounded man goes down. So I get to start my hitbacks. The two Reavers will fight the champion. We might as well pile in. They have seven attacks between them because Sarge is still alive. Hitting on threes. Four hits, we need fives, one wound. Oh, it's oh. one. Disgusting you're doing. Nope. Oh. Champion goes Champion down. goes down. No, consolidate towards the Poxwalkers. Then the Librarian will fight the Poxwalkers. He has four attacks hitting on threes. They all hit. Woundy on threes. Three wounds, so the first oh, one yeah. damage is two damage. Dead. The next one is one damage. Dead. Last one is two damage. Dead. Uh, so I'll keep that one in melee so you can't pile into the yep. uh, Malignant Playcaster. But... Then we've got the Intercessors. We've got three left, including the Sergeant, so they have seven attacks as well. Seven attacks hitting on threes. I'll get an extra attack in there. Four hits. Moody on fives. No wounds. So that's the end of Death Guard turn three. On to Space Marines turn four. So both sides are rapidly running out of models. So the Librarian will fall back out of melee, as will the Intercessors. They'll fall back on top of the box. And the two Reavers will come over just to be near the Poxwalker and the Plague Caster. And that's a very quick movement phase. It's on to the Psychic phase. The Librarian will attempt to manifest Smite. Needs a five. Got it with a seven. Well, I need to deny this. It's important. Not with that. Oh, another peril, another not perils. <laughs> D3 mortal wounds. Two. Takes one out and a half. So there's so, one terminator left on one wound. Moves over there. And then the librarian will attempt to manifest Might of Heroes himself. He gets it with a nine. Can't stop that. Last. So it's on to the shooting phase. Uh, we'll start with the Reavers. One will throw a frag grenade at the Poxwalker. So frag grenade, d6 shots, six. Uh, hitting on threes. Five hits. Woundy on fours. <laughs> oh, what a waste. Four wounds. Dead. Oh, all, of, all of the dead. Oof. And then the intercessors. Uh, one will throw a crack grenade at the Terminator and the other two will fire their bolt rifles at him. Crack grenade hitting on a four because we fell back. It missed. Four bolt rifle shots hitting on fours. One. Wounding on a five. Nope. Librarian will throw a crack grenade at the Terminator. Hits on a three. Four. Four because he fell back. He hit. Uh, three. Wounding on a three. He wounded. Um, that's minus one AP, so that's four plus armor save. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, storm of fire. Oh, well, it mattered. D3 damage. Three. Boom. Hey. Kill the terminator. An Anti-tank grenade to the face. So now it's on to the charge phase, and only the Reavers can charge. So we'll charge the malignant plague caster for lack of anything else why not, to do. Yeah. So uh, he will overwatch with a crack grenade. Oh, it hit. Oh. And it wounded. Four plus armor save. Nope. Oh, only one. Oh, only one. So regular Reaver takes a wound, and their charge distance is 11. We've got to stay away from the Bellman, so we'll go like that. And then they charge, so they get to fight. Seven attacks, hitting on threes. Ugh, four hits. Really on fives. One. Armour. Passed. And he gets to hit back with his hitty stick on threes. Uh, two hits, but Death of the False Emperor. Okay, no, it doesn't do anything. Wounding on threes, you're rolling everything, because it is a plague weapon. Two wounds, minus one AP. Four plus armor save. Made one. So the wounded, wounded man, goes, man down. goes down. And that's the end of my turn. On to Death Guard, turn four. Well, I've only got two models left. The Playcaster has moved to be close to the Librarian, and the Librarian has moved a bit. Mm -hmm. Playcaster will try and cast Smite, which will hit the Librarian. Uh, nope. Blum, that's... He'll try and do Blades of Putrefaction on himself. Didn't get... Oh no, he did get that, because it does have a five. Yep, I will five. attempt to deny it. Five. Need a five. five. I got a 12. You got a perils as well. Yeah. In the shooting phase, the um, bellman will shoot the wounded intercessor, hopefully. Oh, okay. We're hitting on a three. Hitting, on, hitting on three. Good thing I didn't supercharge. Yeah. I, did, I wasn't going to, so I didn't say so, but I wasn't. And then um, he would charge the reaver. The reaver will overwatch with a shot grenade. Mm. It has one shot. It missed. 
And then I'm in. Yep, you're at point blank range. You're in. He has three attacks on threes. Ooh, death of the False Emperor, so no, three hits. Wounding on three, you know, fours, sorry. And wounding on fours, we're rolling everything because it's Warlord trait. No, two wounds. Uh, no AP, but it is two damage. So yes. Three plus armor save. Failed both. <laughs> Someone just double dead. Uh, that's the end of Death Guard turn four. On to Space Marines turn five. So my movement phase, the librarian's just going to scoot along and the intercessor's actually going to come down the box. So we're all closer to the bellman because he is the enemy warlord. And if we can kill him, we get a victory point. So on to the psychic phase. So the librarian will try to manifest smite. Gets it with a six. Need a seven to deny. No, double one. Again. D3 mortal wounds. One. Mm. Which I haven't ignored. Well, so he's down to three. And then the librarian will try to manifest smite here himself. Needs a six. Got it with a seven. The librarian will throw a crack grenade at the bellman. It hit. Wounded on three. It wounded. It's AP minus two. Fail for save. D3 damage. One again. Down to two. Down to two. <laughs> Intercessors will. Uh, shoot at him, one of them will throw a crack grenade, and the other two will fire their bolt rifles. So you've got a crack grenade hitting on three, it hit. Wounded on the three, it wounded, minus one AP. Pass that. Four bolt rifle shots, hitting on threes, two hits. Wounded on fives, one wound, AP minus one. Failed. Resilient. Failed. Down to one wound. The librarian in the charge phase will declare a charge on him. Throw a crack grenade at him. Oh, it hit. Ugh. And it did wound. It did four plus armor save. Nope. Takes a wound. Librarian's down to four. Stay three inches away from the other man. Mm -hmm. So the librarian has five attacks because he's got my heroes. Five attacks hitting on threes. Ugh. Two hits. Wounding on fours. One wound. That's AP. Nope. One wound. Six plus armor save. Yeah, I made it. So we failed to kill the right bringer. So he gets his hit backs. Two he got hits. two hits. Uh, Wounding on four, no, winning on fives, five, because you're like heroes. Are we rolling everything though, because it's a plate weapon? Two uh, wounds. Three plus armor save, because it's no AP. Well, it takes no. two damage, but. Down right. to two. So that's the end of Space Marines turn five, onto Death Guard turn five. So in my movement phase, he will fall back on top of the box. Just move over, be closer to the librarian. Yep. Cast the Smite. Oh, I did get yeah, it. got it, so I'll try to deny it. Need to roll an eight. No. So he died because it'll be one mortal wound plus one for getting a seven. Yeah, so the librarian goes down. That'll so be, that'll be slay the warlord. And then I could do some shooting at the intercessors, but there's no point because. You can't kill all I of them. Did, I can't kill all of them. It's, it's, it's going to be irrelevant. And you'll hold that box. It'll be three victory points to one at the end of the game to the Death Guard. So we'll recap that for you now. Death Guard victory. So that was their mission for issue 44, Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. Or how did you think that went? I honestly had no idea who was going to win until literally like the last five yeah, phases. I think it, would, it came down to when the librarian whiffed. It wasn't going to be a draw at that point. Yeah, he hit twice with his attacks. Oh, yeah. well, I did make my armor save as well, to be fair. So, oh, you did. That was, um, pretty unlikely, that was unfortunate from your point of view. But yeah, I mean, it kind of swung all over the place. There were times when I couldn't make my disgusting resilient, or times when I could. My psychic powers were terrible. Yeah, we both, I think you had bad luck with psychic powers, and I had bad luck with hitting and melee. Yeah, pretty much. Because I think the Reavers have got, what, 32 attacks hitting on threes, and only 14 of them hit or something like that. Yeah, in total, terrible. yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, there was a melee that went on forever in the middle, and, we d and hardly anybody did anything to each other. The Poxwalkers uh, made many, many attacks over the course of the game and did not do a single wound. Yeah, you failed, the you failed a morale test on a six. I did, yeah, so I rolled a six at both ends of the scale, I guess. Uh, the Inceptors um, didn't do anything, and I think they killed, a, and then they just immediately died. Yeah, my champion hit one out of six swings with his power fist. Hellblasters didn't do very much either. I didn't manoeuvre them very well. My Terminators, I did actually manage to pull off a combo with the Warlord trait. Actually, yeah, because my Warlord trait, unlike the last time I took that Warlord trait where it was barely any use, uh, I did actually let me a roll we roll a fair few play button wounds that did actually then wound. And I did pull off the combo with the Terminators, Blades Putrefaction, and so it, be, so it was wounding on yeah. twos, re-rolling everything with sixes, causing mortal wounds. Yeah, I reckon if, you, if your Psyker had made any of his psychic tests, I think he would have won fairly comfortably in the end. It probably would have been a little bit less close, yeah. Or But then again, you could say the same about if I hadn't rolled things, or if, mm. you, uh, if your Inceptors had killed some Blade Marines. So there were, many, there were many points where that could have swung, I think. 
Although, yes, I think my psychic powers being consistently bad was not brilliant. Oh, and actually, um, First Blood was actually important. Because I got First Blood, it meant that you had to achieve a certain thing in order to win, yeah. whereas I really just had to not die. Because with so few victory points on offer, namely one for Slay the Wall, one for First Blood, and then one for each of Yeah, that's days. kind of the recurring theme of the last three missions as mm. well. And it might be more interesting to do them, try it with rolling victory points, like we have in some of the city maps. Yeah, because we have had some of those, and they've been more interesting. In fact, the last three issues, we've had three objective games in a row, and this was the first one that's actually come down to the last, the last turn and the objectives. So from that point of view, yeah, be, rolling victory points would, I don't know, add a bit of interest in the middle of the game, I guess. Although um, this is, will be the last mission for a while of the theme, Capture the Terrain Piece. We've had three Capture the Thing in the Yeah, in it's row. Capture the MacGuffin. Yeah. Although this one's slightly more interesting in that is the roll off to see who goes first. And deployment was actually a thing because there was a little bit of line yeah. sight blockage and stuff. So, well, I guess it's also worth talking about how the boards are so big now that you can't really block off avenues of attack for deep strike units. Yeah, you're right, actually, because there was a point where you were wondering if you could block my terminators off and then realise that... The board's just too big. Yeah, you could go somewhere and then they'd just come in somewhere yeah. else. It's, you can't really do it effectively, at least not with the number of units and the size they are at the moment. No, exactly. Also, starting so far apart again meant that shooting in the first turn was irrelevant, largely. Don't think anything happened. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of the first turn, nothing happens anymore. Yeah, which does make it a little bit more tactical. It's not just a case mm. of move up, so move up and shoot. It's actually, oh, do I advance this unit? Yeah. That kind of stuff. So a little bit more thought into it. We've spoken before that smaller boards have certain kind of games where there's a more kind of canny movement and charging and, you know, where do I pile in this guy? Whereas once you start getting bigger boards, it becomes a bit more expansive and it's like, well, where do I move this unit now? Yeah. Rather than... It's more strategic choices than stat- tactical moves. Yeah, so it's different different things. I kind of like both, actually. I've quite enjoyed playing the smaller games, but the bigger ones are having some different challenges, I guess. Well, you were, well, not moaning exactly, but you were saying at the beginning, um, your Reavers, you know, well, you've got melee infantry on a massive board. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of the problem that the aggressors will have, that they just have to plod everywhere now. And there's actually a problem, actually, that the Primaris Marines have, is that they only have one transport vehicle. Well, oh, two now, actually, because oh, now, yes. the new one, but not the It's not just there. a variant of the existing one. Yeah, sure. You do get one with a magazine, but it's like one of the last thing you yeah. get for the Space Marines. So you just have to foot slog it. And I know Reaver, Reavers, with the Codex, you can get things like Grav Shoots so they can deep strike and um, Grapnel Lines so they can move up buildings with that penalty. But the, the easy-to-build models don't have that option. So it's legging so, across yeah, the board. you've got to just run into melee range. And my Boxwalkers, once again, proved that they're completely useless. Perhaps I should have kept them back on, on the objective yeah, I mean, of my deployment zone. Once the Inceptors were dead, I could have actually just basically yeah. said, well, this is my objective now. For all the good they did in melee, to be honest, they might as well have been over there. Mm. That would have put more pressure on you to win the game as well. Although mm. it would have also meant there weren't a load of pox walkers in the middle, so you would have. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have had anything covering your two characters. No, that's true. The pox walkers did actually do a good job of screening my characters, who only got threatened right at the end. So I think that, don't think there's anything too much more to say about this mission. So if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you've been playing these missions as well, give leave a comment. Tell us if you've been getting on. We've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.